Good evening, viewers, beloveds. My name is Alvaro Tron, and we were just talking and saying to each other that we have to work while it's day because there's going to come a time when it's night and where we would not be able to work. The Bible also says that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And I want to challenge you, if you have a word in your mouth, it's time to raise your voice. It's time to share. If you have a song, like my husband just said, um, you know, it's time to sing. It's time to play something. It's, it's time to write a poem. So use what is in your hands and uh, let's lift up the name of Jesus. So my purpose tonight is just to share the word of God tonight in English, uh, the same word that we uh, preach in the morning was Afrikaans. And there are some people following us that cannot understand Afrikaans. And I just, I told them that I'll redo it in the evening for them. So I would just want to thank you for your patience. And like I said, soon Corona is over and then we go back to our workplaces. And uh, the, then we do not have time to do what we are doing now. And uh, I just thank God for having the time to preach the gospel in season, out season, any time, any hour, and straight from the house. Amen. So today is Palm Sunday, and I said earlier on that I'll just share, but uh, Palm Sunday, you know, it always reminds me when Jesus came into the city of Jerusalem and the people were using um, some palm trees and things in their hands in order to wave and declare and they sang, Hosanna, Hosanna to the one in the highest, the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And uh, whenever I see this, I see uh, entrance, I see a holy procession, I see uh, the Spirit being invited, I see the Spirit coming in. And I want to say, even as this day, we want to declare um, that Namibia is opening up the gates for the King of Glory to come in and the Spirit of the Lord and the anointing to flow in this nation and the supernatural and the, 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 the revival that's going to flow. And uh, as this is a special day, uh, we allow the Spirit, even in the city, we say, let the King of Glory come in. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty, strong in battle. So this Sunday reminds me really of Jesus Christ entering into the city. And I also want to decree and declare that Jesus is entering into your home right now at the comfort of your seat. He's entering into your business. He's entering into your marriage. He's entering in different places of your life. And I just want to say, allow him to come in. He's standing at the door of your heart and he's knocking and he says, if you hear my voice and you open up. So there's something that you got to do uh, on this day and even in this season. Uh, uh, you must open up the door of your heart and allow Jesus Christ to come in. And then I said also that um, the palm tree in itself is a very prophetic tree. And uh, I'm not going to go into the detail as yet, but you would find if, if on an island, wherever a tsunami has came, most of the buildings would be washed away. Most of the people, even there would be great destruction, but you would find the palm tree standing in the midst of the storm. It's standing, it, 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 the wind can blow to the left and the wind can blow to the right, but the palm tree has the flexibility and has the tenacity and the resilience to go from east to west but at the end, things would be washed away, but the palm tree would stand. I prophesy that you will be like a palm tree in this time, that you would stand the test of time. You would stand through whatever situation you are going through, and you will only move the sight. Hallelujah. When the situation comes, and when the enemy comes from the other side, you would just, you know, dodge his fiery darts, but you're going to stand. I speak that you will stand because you're standing in the name of of the Lord. You are a palm tree and a palm tree, it takes time for it to grow and the roots of the palm tree is really going deep. So you will be rooted in the word. You will be rooted in the presence of God and no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And I prophesy that Namibia is like a palm tree. We are just dodging and we are moving apart from the, the fiery 
dart of the enemy, but we will stand the test of time. We will stand in this virus and we shall proclaim the name of the Lord and we will lift up the name of Jesus. <laughs> so that is what I'm trying to say to you today about palm tree, but I'm not talking tonight really about that. Um, the Lord has laid the weapons of warfare in the season on my heart. And we have done uh, the blood of Jesus. We have done the name of Jesus last week. And today we have done the word of God. And my husband got me excited when he spoke earlier because he started speaking about worship. And I was saying, I think we should discuss the next weapon of warfare as praise and worship. So I'm giving you this we weapons because we are in a war, a war between life and death, a war between light and darkness. And our weapons is not carnal, but it is mighty and powerful to bring strongholds down. You cannot fight a spiritual battle in the natural. I I'm here to declare to you the mask and the gloves and the, and the social, the, all those things is going to work and we better do it. But let me tell you, this virus is really a spiritual battle going on and we need some spiritual warriors that will rise up all over the world and will take the battle on and you are not going to be at the back, but you're going to be at the front and you're going to say, I'm going to take it on in the name of the Lord. I call that David will rise in the giant, in the face of the giant of this virus and say, you are mocking at the children of God. You come to me in that way, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. I see that somebody is being stirred and somebody is going to come in the name of the Lord and we're going to throw these stones and some of these stones are the word of God. Some of these stones are worship. It's the blood of God. And this giant, this virus will fall. I decree and I declare that this virus shall fall. It has to come down because there's some warriors that has taken position and are saying we are not afraid. We are going to stand the test of time and we're going to Get through this battle in Jesus' name. And I challenge every giant in this nation to arise and shine and to make your voice being heard and to come to the front line of the battle. This is not the time to be at the back. This is not the time to sleep. This is not the time to eat. This is the time to fight because we are busy speaking into the atmosphere and things are changing. So I was saying that um, we, uh, the weapons of our warfare, there's about eight weapons. You would keep on hearing me talking about this. Repetition is good. Then you're learning something great. And some of you watching, you might know these things by heart, but I'm also training a nation here because we need some warriors. We need every soldier on the ground. We need everyone being part of the battle because God is busy raising up an army that will take his name to the next level. But God is raising up an army and a remnant that will be glory carriers, that will be revival carriers, that will be carriers of the presence of God, that will be moving tabernacles, that will not be ashamed, that will be bold, and the light will shine, and things will begin to change in this nation. And I decree and I declare, this is the season of revival. This is the time of the revival. There's faces, and there's faces and stages and we are in a phase of revival and I thank God for this virus because if it was not for this virus I would not even stand here and preach and I'm telling you so many people are busy preaching, teaching um, praying, singing and I'm saying keep on doing it because you are clearing the atmosphere your word has a power so these weapons some of them I'm going to mention them the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus the word of God your testimony is a weapon, <clears throat> excuse me, thanksgiving is a weapon, prayer and fasting is a weapon, communion is a weapon, praise and worship is a weapon, there's even more weapons like tithes and offerings can be a weapon, and the weapons in Ephesians chapter 6, the full armor of God, and I just want to cover quickly, we said about the blood, that blood is life, and that the soul is in the blood, hallelujah, um, that blood has a voice and blood is a sign. When the enemy moved through Egypt, the blood was a sign. Now the Bible says, when I see the blood, the blood will be a sign. 
Anybody cannot just plead the blood of Jesus. You've got to have authority to plead for it to work. And how do you get authority? Is when the blood speaks in your life, through your life, and for you, and on behalf of you. And, and that is when the blood is assigned, and the blood will be seen by the Lord. We can fool a lot of people with our uh, religion, but we cannot fool the Lord. You know, uh, because he knows who is blood washed and who is not blood washed. So that is the blood and the name. We said about the name. The name of God is a strong tower. We are saved by his name. And uh, there's no other name by which man can be saved. Let me tell you, Jesus means Savior. And that's the most powerful name all over the world. I hope you've heard me all over the world. The name of Jesus is a, the most powerful name. It's the only name by which man can be saved. No other name has that saving grace. And I'm here to declare to you, there's many people that's been lifted up as God in different religions, but I've never read about any of those people that has a resurrection story. But our God, Jesus Christ, died and after three days he was risen and he seated at the right hand of the father and it's the one that we are preaching about tonight hallelujah and we are not ashamed because this gospel has set us free amen and the bible says that every knee shall bow every tongue will confess that jesus christ is lord and savior the scripture i want to jump in the scripture uh, that i want to read tonight to you because we're going to talk about the word uh, i'm going to try and rush through this you know, um, because of our time, but stay tuned. Don't, don't go on. And, 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 and I would like you to share the press, the share button, because I realize the more people we can reach, it means the more souls we can reach. Hallelujah. Now in the beginning, I'm reading from one John, one John chapter one, it reads as follows. Um, I think I need to just get my chair here. Um, you can just bring the chair. I would like to sit down. Excuse me for that. But uh, we preached in the morning. I feel a bit tired. And I'd rather sit down before I'm making a nice miracle here. <laughs> Jesus, we love you and we praise you. Um, in the beginning, in the beginning, before all time, was the Word. The Word is Christ. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God Himself. He was present originally with God. All things were made and came into existence through him and without him was not even one thing made that has come into being. In him, which is the word, which is Jesus, was life and the life is the light of man. In the beginning, the word was with God and the word was God. And the script, uh, there's a scripture, I think it's verse 14, that says, The word became flesh and the word dwell amongst us. Now I'm here to declare to you that speaking about the word is one of my favorite passions because God has given each one of us a gift. And um, uh, the word fascinates me because it's getting me all excited because the Bible says that the word is alive. And it is sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, I'm going to share a couple of scriptures with you because the word is a weapon. Amen. And this is the weapon that we're going to use. So in the beginning, the earth was void and empty and dark. And Jesus and God the Father and the Holy Spirit was moving over creation and they spoke a word and they say, let there be light. And I'm speaking to somebody's dark situation right now. And I say, let there be light. Even in your depression, let there be light. In your sickness, let there be light. 
Because the Holy Spirit is going to work for you. The Holy Spirit is hovering right now over your situation and is busy changing it, is busy recreating it, is busy reviving it, is busy transforming it, and, and is busy doing a new thing. God is busy doing a new thing right now all over the earth. And they said, let there be light. They created the earth by a word. It means that your word has creative power. When you speak, things move. When you speak, things is about to happen. Um, your word is so powerful. The Bible says, if, if you have faith like a mustard seed and you say to this mountain, move, it shall move. I am here to declare to you, somebody, you need to open up your mouth and speak. Whatever you are going through, if the devil is in your house, today is the day you are putting the devil out of your house and you tell him, listen, you pack your bags and leave. This is not your house. This is not your place. I command you by the name of Jesus, go now in Jesus' name. So it's time to take authority. It's time to speak the word of God. Um, in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, the Bible says that Death and life is in the power of the tongue. This means there's power in your tongue. And that's why you were born for a time such as this. This is not the time to be silent. No, this is the time to use the word of God and speak and create and move and push and turn around and transform and begin to revive and speak things into being. Hallelujah. Is there somebody excited in the house of God? It's so strange these days. We are preaching with our church online and I can't hear the proper amens, but it's taking me back into the days when we started learning how to minister. And for some of us, we had crazy ways how we learned to minister. And for me, I went to the field and I started ministering to the grass and I could see how the grasses were saying, Amen, Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that the trees will clap their hands. And you, you know <laughs> what I mean? So uh, uh, it, it's, it's strange, but I'm connecting with you. And I'm coming live to you today. And I'm saying, speak the word of God. Because there's power in your words. Ephesians 6 are talking about the full armor of God. And the sword is the word of God. The spirit of God. Amen. Uh, Psalms 119 verse 9 says, How shall the young, the youth, cleanse his ways? How shall a young per person live to, to be in righteousness? It is to keep himself by the word of God. It is because some of our youngsters are not keeping the word of God. That's why we've gone so far astray. And I'm here to speak to a young person listening to me. It's time you get into the word. This virus was created for you to open up your Bible. This virus was created so that you can come closer to God. Let's use the opportunity when, because when everything is well and we are having a fun time, people are not reading their Bibles. This generation has a problem. They don't know the doors of the church. Our previous generations, their parents, they were teaching them where the church is, how to pray, all these things. But I find that the young people of today, they are going to shop right on a Sunday and they are, they are not going to church. Some of them haven't even been to church for the whole of last year. And if you're listening to me, it's time to change your ways. It's time to change your life. It's time to open the Bible and come to church because you see, even now in a challenging time, the doors of the churches are closed. What now? What are you doing right now? So I'm speaking to you and I'm saying, keep your ways in the, uh, 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 in the word because in the word there's light, there's life. It, it switches on. It brings a light. It brings direction. So read the word. Psalms 119 verse 05 says, the word is a lamp unto my feet, a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Uh, the reason you are falling around in confusion because there's no light for your path. What is the light? It is the word. The Bible says that the word of God is light. It brings a revelation. It brings light. It brings direction. It takes away confusion. The word is a lamp unto my feet. The Psalms 119 verse 11 says, I have hid the word of God in my heart so that I cannot sin against you. Some of us are sinning plainly because the word is not treasured in our hearts. 
The words are not being hidden in my heart. The word is a weapon of warfare. It will keep you from sinning. It will keep you from falling. Sometimes you want to do something wrong, but because you know that it is written and it is being said in the word, it is keeping you not to do that thing. And that brings me to Jesus and the devil in the wilderness. When Jesus came out of his 40 day fast and the devil uh, the devil were tempting him and, and saying, you can jump over this cliff or you can eat this rock. But then Jesus was the word. He didn't know he was dealing with the word himself. He didn't know he was dealing with eternal life. I, I guess he knew, but he, he underestimated the power of Jesus and who he was dealing with. And Jesus could just draw scripture. And he says, it is written that you shall not tempt the Lord your God and today I want to give you a weapon whenever the enemy are tempting you you got to tell him get behind me Satan because the Bible says if you resist the enemy he shall flee from you you got to pull a word and you got to fight with the spirit and cut him down with the word of God because the moment you say it is written then there's power because it is a weapon amen hallelujah uh, Hebrews 12 says, and I want to read this one and also the one coming up next because it is such a powerful one. I have enjoyed myself today because I love the word. I love the word. Can somebody say, I love the word. I love reading the word. I love spending time in the word. By the way, the word is your daily bread. If you don't eat the word, you are starving spiritually. You're having anorexia spiritually. It's time to open up your Bible. It's time to read the word. Get a habit of reading your word daily. Even if you start with the book of Psalms, get a habit of reading through the Bible because the days are going to come that even this Bible will be burned down and the only thing that will survive is the word that is hidden in your heart and then you can fight the enemy and you can say it is written is there somebody that's with me in the house today um, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 it reads as follows it says for the word that God speaks is alive and full of power making it active operative Oh, I love this. I love this version amplified. It's making the word active, operative, energizing. I was tired. I didn't think I'm going to split and speak like that. But the moment I was speaking about the word, a power came because the word has power. The word brings energy. The word brings passion. The word brings a drive. And if you have a word, you can conquer the world. You can conquer uh, the virus. The word is bringing miracles. Hey, hallelujah. So it is making active, operative, energizing, effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Penetrating to dividing line of breath and life, soul and spirit and of the joints and marrows. It's exposing and sifting. And analyzing and judging every thoughts and purposes of the heart. You can do whatever you do, but let me tell you that there'll come a day that the word will penetrate and it is reading, it is moving, it is cutting right through your heart. And even you that is watching, there's something that you need to stop that you are doing. And I command you to stop by the name of Jesus and turn around your life and give your life to Jesus. Because this word is going down into your heart and it's beginning to transform and it's beginning to change your life. And just take this word because it's sharper, it's more powerful, it's activating, it's energizing, it's operative. This word is bringing life to you even in your house. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4. Hallelujah. What a powerful scripture. It, it reads, I'm reading from verse 3. It says, For though we walk in flesh, we are not carrying our warfare according to the flesh, using human weapons. Listen, we will not overcome corona with human 
and weapons. We shall not only overcome Corona by the gloves and the mask, please wear it. But that's not the only weapons. We're going to fight this thing in the spirit and I'm giving you a weapon tonight, the word of God. It says we cannot fight in the flesh, though we walk in the flesh. We got to use uh, uh, spiritual weapons. Verse 4 says, for the weapons of our warfare are not physical. It's not carnal. It's not weapons of flesh and blood. But they are mighty before God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. What this virus needs is the word of God. What this virus needs is the power of God. It's the move of God. It's the presence of God. It's the anointing of God. This virus needs a word. And the word that I'm declaring to this virus that there is no time for you in this nation. There's no space for you in this nation. Maybe you've tried in other places, but I'm decreeing and I'm declaring and I'm letting you know. I suffer notice on you, coronavirus, and I say you have to leave this nation because God is in this place, because the grace of God is in this place, and the word of the Lord say to you, O oh Corona, pack your bags and leave because there's no place for you in this nation. You shall not kill our people. We speak and we prophesy, we decree and we declare none of the cases that's been reported nobody shall die. They shall all recover. We speak a healing power over them right now. We speak the blood of Jesus over them. We speak the name of Jesus and now we speak the word of God over them. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. You must use your words and speak power. Amen. Jeremiah 29 verse 20, uh, 23 verse 29 says, The word of God is like a hammer. The word of God is like a fire. And today I send the fire of the Holy Ghost to your house. I send the fire of the Holy Ghost to your business. I send the fire of the Holy Ghost to your, to your marriage. I send the fire of the Holy Ghost to your ministry. Because the word of God is like a fire. And the Bible says in Jeremiah 20 verse 9, Your word is like a fire shut up in my bones. The reason that the fire couldn't kill uh, 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 Daniel and his friends uh, that was put in the fire. The fire were turned up seven times, but they did, they did not keep track with the fire of God. They underestimated the fire of God. So the moment those three guys were in the oven because they refused to bow down to the virus, they refuse to bow down to the things of this world. They refuse to bow down to the systems of Babylon. They put these guys into a fire. But they didn't realize the moment the guys are going into the fire, there's a word for that fire. And the word is the fire of God shut up in their bones. And the fire of God quenched the fire of that oven that was turned up. And I'm here to declare to somebody, it doesn't matter what you're going through, the fire of God is going to quench the situation that you are going through and you're coming out gold. You're coming out better. You're coming out greater. I thank God for the valleys because if it was not for the valleys, the glory would not be evident. I'm telling you today, the word of God is like fire in your bones and I'm sending that fire to you right now in the name of Jesus. Kasha Tarabaya I speak the fire of the Holy Ghost. I speak the fire of the Holy Ghost. To wherever you are, I release it to you. I say to the walls right now in your life that is binding you, that's blocking you, I speak to those walls and I say, come down. I send the fire of the Holy Ghost against this virus. And I say, get out of this nation. Get out of this nation. There's no place for you. I command you by the name of Jesus. I send the fire of God. And the fire of God is it's like a wall around this nation on the corners of this nation, on the gates of this nation. Right now, I speak to Namibia and I say, be set on fire. Every church be set on fire. Every home be set on fire. Every individual be set on fire. Let the fire on the altar not burn out. It will burn continuously. Your prayer altar shall have fire. Your worship altar shall have fire. Your marriage shall have fire. I say your kids shall have fire. I speak fire to your home right now. I say fire in your house, fire in your cupboards, fire into your family. Right now I release the fire of the Holy Ghost, the fire of God. The fire will speak for you. Hallelujah. 
I want to tell you quickly two stories uh, before we go that you get two different kinds of words, the Rema word, the spoken word, this is what I'm doing, and the Logos word, when I open the Bible and I begin to read, it is the written word. I want to tell you these stories, the one is in Matthew chapter 8, hallelujah, it speaks about the centurion that came to Jesus, saying to Jesus that my servant is sick, and I, I know you can heal him, and he said to Jesus, you know what, I'm not worthy that you come into my house, but you can speak only one word. I'm telling you tonight what you need is one word. One word for your situation. One word for your marriage. One word for your business. One word for your ministry. Now maybe you need one word and I declare, I decree and I declare that word to be revival. I say arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of God has risen upon you. This guy, the centurion had so much faith to say if you can only speak a word, my servant will be healed. Somebody is going to get healed by the listening of this word. I decree healing upon your situation. I speak whatever the situation. I come against the forces of cancer and I say cancer leave that home. Leave that person right now. And God was showing me in the morning there's a man with a lung disease and I speak to that man now. Whoever you are that's watching whether now or later I speak healing into your lungs. I decree and I declare you shall live and you shall not die to declare the works of God hallelujah so uh, Jesus was speaking a word and the guy got healed and that's what I'm doing tonight I'm using the word as a weapon and I'm speaking words of life and I'm speaking over your life I, I speak encouragement I speak inspiration I speak creation I speak revival and it needs to happen in Jesus name the second story is about the prophet Elisha um, Naam that came to that actually sent a um, servant and, and, and asked for healing in 2 Kings chapter 5 verse 10. And Elisha said, I want you, go tell him that he needs to go dip himself seven times in the Jordan. Let me tell you, he thought, who do you think you are? You say you're a prophet of God, now you're just sending a word? Let me tell you, at least... The guy came down from his attitude and he obeyed what the prophet said and he went and dipped himself into the Jordan and he was miraculously healed. Let me tell you, the Bible says, believe in your prophets so that it may go well with you. Some of you, the reason why it's not going well, you don't believe in your prophets. You believe in prophets that you don't know. You believe in people you've never seen. You believe in people you don't even know their lives. You don't know uh, what are they doing on the other side where you can't see them. You believing in people that doesn't carry fruit. The Bible says that you shall know the tree by its fruit. Many people are going around by titles, uh, for example, prophets, but in actual fact, they are false prophets. And the Bible says you are being deceived because you do not know the scriptures and today I'm telling you you shall know a prophet by its fruit you shall know a tree by its fruit if a, a, a grape a vineyard can't have oranges if there's oranges there must be something something wrong and people are measuring prophets by signs wonders and miracles they are measuring prophets by thus says the Lord but let me tell you now you need to measure the tree by its fruits and what are the fruits it's Galatians 5 verse 22 speaking about the fruits of the spirit if you see there's no love if you see there's no peace there's no joy there's no self-control that listen here you gotta run right now if you're having a prophet in your life that is manipulating controlling intimidating and doing all kinds of funny things let me tell you it's a spirit of Jezebel operating and you gotta leave in the name of Jesus you gotta go away from it know the prophets and, and, and believe in them but Test the fruits and look at the fruits. And let me tell you, Namibia, it's time that you begin to listen to the prophets in this nation. God has put people in Namibia for Namibia. Namibians is going to build Namibians. Uh, I, I'm, I'm open for foreigners and I love foreign nations. But I'm telling you, Namibia, it is time you honor the people in your nation, in your church, in your neighborhood. Stop that familiarity spirit. Your answer is sitting with the 
prophet in your neighborhood. Your answer is sitting with a prophet in your nation. And you're running all over the world looking for the answer. But the answer is right in your nation. And, and sometimes the answer is even in your home. And the greatest prophet in your house is your husband or your wife. You better listen to them. Sometimes you don't want to listen to them because you're waiting for a sign from a prophet from wherever. But I'm telling you, it's coming down. All these things are coming down. These false prophets will also leave our nation. Those churches will even close. I'm saying that because the true church of God, it is the time to arise and shine because in this crisis, uh, the, these prophetic words of thus says the Lord is not the thing that's going to work now because the Bible says that prophecies shall come and go, but the word of God will stand. What we need is the basic gospel of Jesus Christ right now. It's going to make a change in your life. Hallelujah. So go and test uh, go and test that prophet but also believe in a prophet that you know is a prophet of God because if you're going to take the word it's going to work for you hallelujah so it's the word of Jesus being spoken the word of a prophet being spoken and sometimes the prophet is giving you some prophetic instructions they obey because it's going to work for you let me tell you that hallelujah I want to tell you today what you need is a word there's a word for your circumstances there's a word for your business. There's a word for the storm. There's a word for your struggle. There's a word for your marriage. You don't need more money. You need a word. That word is going to create the more money. You don't need a wife. You need a word. If you have a word, you will have that. Seek first the kingdom of God and, and God will add the rest of the things. I'm telling you, you got to get a word for the situation. In Jesus' name. Are you with me? Amen. I hear the church say, Amen. Let me tell you to when Jesus Christ, when the angel came to Mary and, and told Mary that you're going to fall pregnant and, you, and you're going to have a son and you must name him Jesus and he, he, he's going to be the, um, the redeemer of the world. And then at the end, Mary says, let it be unto me according to thy word. Let me tell you, you must say to the Lord, let me be to unto me according to thy word. What is the word saying about this virus? This word is saying that the name of Jesus is a strong tower. This word is saying, do not be afraid. This word is saying, do not be discouraged. This word is saying, stand strong and see the salvation of the Lord. You have a word. Let it be unto Namibia according to the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord shall say unto Namibia, this is the set time of revival. This is the time to arise and shine. This is the time to sing a song, Namibia. Namibia, you shall shall be healed. Namibia, you shall be put on the map of the world. Namibia, there's coming a force that is coming from Namibia that will be seen unto the ends of the world. Namibia is delivering a, a group of ministers that will preach the gospel outside this nation and, and people will begin to know that we've got men and women of God in Namibia. Namibia, you are giving a harvest of missionaries. Namibia, I speak to your womb in the name of Jesus. Your set time has come for salvation. Namibia, today is the day of salvation. Namibian church, you get ready because there's a great harvest coming home. You got to enlarge. You got to enlarge. Put your 10 pence deep because this is the set time of the Lord. Prisoners are coming free. Hallelujah. The hungry needs to be fed. Hallelujah. There should be homes for the homeless. All foreigners are coming to bless our nation, to build our land. Our sons and daughters will come from afar. Namibia, stand up and shine because this is your time. You're a city upon a hill. You're the salt of the earth. Hallelujah. We speak peace, be still in the midst of this virus. Corona, be still, be still, be still, be still. Numbers decrease. The 60 numbers that's been recorded. We speak to you right now. Come down in the name of Jesus. You shall come down. I speak healing into the 16 people. I speak healing into the 16 people. We speak that it should not enlarge. It should not be more people. We cover these people in the name of Jesus. Now maybe you are covered by the blood of Jesus and by the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The word is near you. The word is within your mouth. The word is right on your
your tongue. There's a prophet in your midst. And that prophet's name is Jesus Christ. Greater is he that is in me than the one that's living in the world. The greatest prophet of all time is living in your life. You don't need to press buttons to look for prophets. You don't need to fly countries to look for prophets. Listen, you don't need to run from church to church to look for a prophet. The prophet is right inside of your life. His name is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I just want to uh, give you some keys for the prophetic word. Hallelujah. It's about uh, eight keys. I'll run quickly through them. And with that, I'll round up. Hallelujah. Um, but obedience is better than sacrifice. John in, and John at the wedding of Canaan, um, Mary told the followers of Jesus, do whatever he tells you to do. And tonight I'm telling you, obey the word of the Lord. Whatever God tells you to do, do it. You're going to see the results. Even this ministry, what we are busy now, we are not, it's not like I don't have anything else to do. I have other stuff to do, but I am doing what the Lord has commanded me to do. I'm not doing it for funfair. I'm not doing it because I'm not busy. I am busy with a heavenly kingdom assignment and a mandate from above. I'm doing what he said, go and do. And it's going to bring a lot of harvest home. Hallelujah. Prophetic word. Prophetic word must always just be a confirmation of what you have already heard. Sometimes it's a brand new word and it's good to go and test this word. Hallelujah. So the keys how to, to work with this prophetic word is that there's times that uh, you'll be asked to do a prophetic action. Uh, God is telling you, you're going to go to Zambia uh, and he's telling you, I want you to get a passport. And I keep on telling this to our ministry because it's an international flying ministry. Uh, and I tell them, get a passport because we're going places. I'm telling you that's watching now, you are going places. If you don't have a passport, get your passport ready because God is about to promote you. He's about to take you to places you have never been to. Hallelujah. So he'll ask you to do some prophetic actions like he asked. Uh, Elisha said to Naam, jump in the Jordan and go dip yourself seven times. So many of the prophetic words that you have received, the reason why you haven't seen the fruit and the fulfillment of that word is because you have to ask God, what's the prophetic action on this word? What should I do? What is my action that I should do for this word? Hallelujah. If you need to go someplace to, uh, as soon as the borders are opening up, uh, it's time to pack your bag. Somebody needs to pack a bag right now as a prophetic action because you're on the move. Hallelujah. That scholarship you are waiting for, it's coming through in the name of Jesus. Ribaka Shete. So the second thing is, the first thing is prophetic action. Second thing is discern the prophetic word. You must know whether it's a curse or whether it's a blessing. Is it a, is it a prophetic word or is it a curse? Because some of the prophets are actually cursing you and you are taking it as a prophetic a word. And that, that curse is going to walk and destroy your life. But tonight in the name of Jesus, whoever is watching, we are binding and destroying that curse in the name of Jesus, that curse shall not operate any longer. We speak a blessing, we cancel that curse because some of the words that has been released were out of line. You need to discern how did you discern? You test the word. How do you test the word? You test it with the word of God. It must be in line with the word. Amen. The third thing is, I already said it now, you test the word. Um, you take the word or you leave it. If a word, if you know this word is not uh, confirming in your spirit, you don't take it. You cancel it in Jesus' name. You pray. The fourth thing is you pray the word through. Some of the prophetic words didn't come to pass because you've never prayed it through. It's time to go take your prophetic book. I hope you have a book where you write all your dreams and when you write all your prophetic words, whenever prophetic words are being released, it's good to record to it because uh, whenever you record, you are, you are establishing the word and the word will work for you and the word will do wonders for you. And whenever you read the word of God, again, it's reviving. Hallelujah. So you pray the word through. Number five, you wait on God 
for this word. You, some of these words are immediate words. Some words has a timeline. You put it on the shelf, you wait for it, hallelujah, for the appointed time. But as you wait, you do prophetic actions. As you wait, you pray it through and, and you keep on testing it. And many times you'll get confirmation upon confirmation for this word, hallelujah. I'm just giving you a, a, a teaching handy how to treat prophetic words because many of you have received prophetic word, but it hasn't come to pass. This could be the reason that it hasn't come to pass. The other reason could, it could just be a false prophecy. Hallelujah. Don't take every word you to hear. Number six, write the word down. Habakkuk 2, 2. I already said it. Number seven, have faith in the word. Believe the word. If you don't believe the word that was spoken to you, the word is not going to happen. You need to believe the word. You need to grab the word with your whole heart. You need to put the word out there. Write it down so you can see it. You can run with the word. That's what the Bible says. So believe the word. Number eight, give God honor when the word are being fulfilled. I've seen so many prophetic words being fulfilled, but people like to give God the honor. People would even say, start to give other people the honor and to say this one and that one, but they like to give God the honor. Let me tell you, next time God is fulfilling a word, remember to give him honor. And some of the word, you know why it is being prolonged? Because God also know the moment I give my son this word, word and he might even backslide some of you have got a word that you get a car the moment you get a car you begin to drive with this car to places that he has been delivered you from so it's important also that you are mature to handle the word of the lord the prophetic word of the lord i want to just also now share the prophetic word that i got uh, in the morning but there's somebody listening and that that wants a word from the lord that is crying out for the Lord. And I hear the Lord says that this is your set time. This is your moment. There is a door that's going to open up for you. And whenever God opens a door, no man shall be able to, to close it. I see somebody crying out for employment. Let me tell you, as soon as this lockdown is finished, you will get a job. And there's somebody that will even get an appointment in the middle of this lockdown. I'm prophesying even in the middle of this lockdown, there's a financial breakthrough coming to you. Your bank account is going to have a shock in the middle of a economic crisis let me tell you there's a great blessing coming your way you've been trying to sell your land but in this lockdown you're going to get a buyer let me tell you God is going to do a great thing for you in the midst of this hallelujah I just want to get this word out that I wrote down in the morning um, I hope you're still there and I hope this word is a blessing to you and um, because great things is about to happen. I'll just share. I was sitting here in the morning and I asked the Lord to speak as we speak on his word. I would love to minister a bit prophetically to people's lives today. And uh, I could hear the Lord saying, um, there's a man with a lung disease and God is going to heal you. And I speak healing over you right now. And I say to your lungs, hear the word of God. I speak the recreation power of God over your lungs. I say your lungs will be as brand as new. You having trouble to breathe, but the spirit of the Lord is breathing over you right now. The fire of God is burning in your lungs right now. And I speak the healing power of God over you and you shall have a testimony. Somebody is pl planning to get married. That's what the spirit told me in the morning. Somebody is planning to get married but you are doubting. You're asking, is this the Lord? You're asking for a sign, but your sign is the sign. The Lord says, I am in it. The Lord says, it is my will. Go ahead. Permission granted. You would know who I'm talking. You will know if I'm talking to you. It's not a word for everybody, but you would know if you show me. This is your sign. Go and get married. Hallelujah. It's from the Lord. Also, I hear somebody wanting to go into a business deal. God is saying, I'm approving of it. The stamp of approval is on it. You can go ahead into that deal. It is from the Lord. Hallelujah. I hear the name Mary. Mary, the Lord is calling you to stop whatever you are busy with. 
and the Lord is inviting you and calling you home. And I hear that your window of grace is getting smaller. The Lord is saying he's been calling you for some time now, but you kept on ignoring him. But tonight he's saying, I'm coming to your house and I'm coming to where you are. And I'm telling you, get yourself ready and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Because there's a timeline even for salvation. Hallelujah. And I, I, I speak to you, Mary, very seriously. To about a couple of weeks ago, there's somebody close to me that I spoke to in this line. And I said to the person, because she was about to give birth, I said to her, go home, make your life right with God, confess all your sin, make peace with God, because we never know how things are going to turn out. And let me tell you, uh, 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 that person actually died. Somebody very close to my heart's very broken, but it was a warning from God and Mary I speak to you right now it is your set time it's the day of salvation for you and if you want to serve God and you have been listen to me and you hear me inbox me I'm going to call you I'm going to lead you to Jesus Christ do not delay Mary the spirit of the Lord is pleading with you Mary and I speak to the coronavirus right now and I said that says the spirit of the Lord the coronavirus is not the end it is only the beginning of a great move of God. It's a beginning of a great shaking. Huh. Know that I'm with you, says the Lord. Do not fear. Do not despair. <laughs> As it has come, it will also go. The same way it has come, it will also go. I saw a vision. I, I see a car with a flat tire. It's a man of God that is discouraged, tired, burnt out. But the Lord is saying to you, Remember you have a spare wheel. Remember you have the word in you. Remember you have the power of God. Remember you have the anointing upon your life. And, and the word of the Lord says that you need to go on. You need to move on. You need to let go and let God, hallelujah, I am with you. The Lord is saying, I, I am your hope. I'm breaking the spirit of depression on this man of God. And I speak life over you right now. I speak light into you and I say, move on. And in the spiritual realm, I push you with the power of God now. I push you out of this dark cloud. I push you out of the situation. And I speak life into you. And I say, your life shall never be the same again. I say, wherever you are, if you can hear me, the prophetic action coming to my mind right now is that you should turn around seven times where you are you speak a revolution you speak a turnaround power right now and your life shall not be the same believe when it is being spoken unto you and then I saw a, a, a vision of a cell phone and the spirit of the Lord was saying to me divine connection to so somebody is going to be connected divinely for marriage somebody is going to be connected divinely for business for studies, there's a scholarship coming through for somebody. It's the second time the Spirit of the Lord says this. That there's a scholarship coming through. Somebody is going to uh, connect it divinely for travel. Uh, there's a breakthrough coming upon you. Be sensitive. Be open to the Word of God. I want to pray to you, with you tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, whoever is watching, whoever's watched the whole time, I pray for a turnaround anointing. I pray for the fire of God. I pray for the word of God. I pray that this person will have a testimony. By this time tomorrow, this person shall have a testimony that's been watching the whole time. I, have, I, 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 I tell you to claim this word and to take it because there's coming a turnaround anointing. I speak the power of God over your life right now and I say the word of God will work for you the word of God will work for this nation the word of God will work for your ministry the word of God will work for your business the word of God will work for your marriage I speak life over you I declare the glory of God over you I declare the fire of God over you I sent revival to your home right now in the mighty name of Jesus I speak to your prayer altar and I say let the fire burn in the mighty name of Jesus. Folks, while I've been rushing tonight, but it's the fire shut up in my bones, wanting to burn. I want to thank you for being with us today.
in the morning, even in the evening, over this 21 days. We are on a prophetic day today. Um, it's the 14th day. Hallelujah. It is, it is a prophetic time. It's completion. And um, we still have a couple of days left. And there's power in consistent prayer. There's power in when you keep on doing a certain thing. Uh, let us push through Namibia. Let us move the mountain by the word of the Lord. And we say, we shall be free from Corona in Jesus' mighty name. May God bless you before I continue to preach. I love you guys and I bless you. And may the Lord give you a word in Jesus' name. Amen.